So if you have your Bibles with you today, I want to encourage you to open them to Matthew 28. Matthew 28, we're jumping all the way to the end of Matthew. We're going to the end, and believe me, we'll cover all the rest. We're just doing this temporarily this Sunday to talk about the issue of baptism. You know, here at Lenexa Baptist Church, we have two ordinances. We have the Lord's Supper, and we have baptism. And both of these ordinances are incredibly, incredibly powerful. Let me tell you why I think these two ordinances are so powerful. I believe these two ordinances are so incredibly powerful because both of these ordinances picture for us the gospel. Both baptism and the Lord's Supper are pictures of what Christ has done for us and what he's done in our heart and in our life. Powerful, powerful pictures of what God is. I love this about God. He kind of gets down on our level. And he gives us these living illustrations of the depth of his love for us. And we see these in in baptism and the Lord's Supper. But today I want us to focus specifically on baptism. And when it comes to baptism, there's a lot of questions. You know, baptism, the question is, well, how, how are we supposed to get baptized? Sometimes the question is, when are we supposed to get baptized? A lot of times the question is, what's, what's the connection between baptism and salvation? Well, this morning, I hope and pray, pray to, to bring some clarity on those questions on the basis of God's word. Because at the end of the day, can I be real honest with you? It doesn't really matter what you think. <laughs> and it doesn't matter what I think. It only matters what God's word says. And I believe with all my heart that God's given us a lot of clarity on these issues if we'll just look to his word. And so on the basis of his, the word this, this today, uh, I pray that we'll answer some of these questions for you. So would you stand with me in honor of reading God's word? Matthew 28, we're gonna be reading 18 uh, through 20. It says there, Matthew 28, verses 18 through 20, Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to observe everything I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Father, we pray this morning that you would bless the study of your word. Help us to better understand what it means to trust you, to know you, and to follow you in this important ordinance of baptism. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. So, Jesus is here on this mountain. He's giving some final instructions to his guys. And essentially, he gives them one very simple command. He tells them to make disciples. At the end of the day, that's what he's told us to do, to make disciples. But involved in that command is two important elements. The first is I want you to baptize them. And the second is teach them to observe all that I've commanded you. At the end of the day, the predominant attitude of our life should be that whatever God's word says is what we do. We base our life on his word. And teach them to observe everything that I've commanded you. But I want us to focus predominantly this morning upon this one issue, this one aspect of the Great Commission, baptize them. And I want us to see, as best I can, three critical elements of baptism that should be incredibly clear to all of us. And the first is this, that baptism is a personal command from the Lord. Baptism is a personal command from the Lord. Christ, with no ambiguity whatsoever, commanded that everyone who follows him, everyone who decides to follow Christ, to become a disciple of Christ, is to be baptized. In fact, you can make the argument that the very first command that Christ gives to us is to be baptized. At the end of the day, baptism is an issue of obedience to the Lordship of Christ. Now, the one exception that everybody brings up when you have these discussions is the thief on the cross. And kind of the thought going that if the thief on the cross didn't have to be baptized, then neither do I. Now, I want to be clear. Salvation is by faith alone. It's not a work. It comes to us by faith in Jesus Christ as as a gift of God's grace. But please understand something else this morning. The reason that the thief on the cross didn't get baptized was not because he was unwilling to get baptized, but because he couldn't get baptized. It's really hard to get baptized when you've got nails in your hands and you're hanging on a cross. The issue with the thief was not a willingness, it was an issue of ability. 
Folks, the model that we see in Scripture is that a person comes to a personal faith in Jesus Christ, and then having come to know Christ, they follow in obedience to his word, and they get baptized. So baptism primarily is a personal command from Christ. Secondly, I want you to understand that baptism is a public confession. It's a public confession. Jesus here tells us to make disciples. And the very first thing he tells us to do is baptize them. I used to wonder, what is it that's so significant? I mean, think about this. Jesus could have given us all kinds of instructions following this command to make disciples. He could have told us any number of things to do with a new disciple and a new convert. But Jesus saw fit in his sovereignty and his wisdom to make sure that we knew that the very first thing that you're to do with a new disciple is to baptize them. And I've often asked myself a question, why is it so significant that that would be the first thing that he'd want us to do? Well, I think in order to understand that question, you've got to understand something of first century Christianity. Remember, in first century Christianity, you weren't baptized in a closed door church in a heated pool. (laughs) You were baptized in a very public place, a local watering hole, but some public place where a lot of people would have trafficked. And you got to remember, in that day and time, to follow Jesus was not the popular thing to do. If you put yourself out there and said, Jesus as Corias, instead of Caesar as Corias, boy, you were going out on a limb. And you could lose your friends, you could lose your family, you could lose your job, you could lose your business. You might even lose your life. Listen, in first century Christianity, if you got baptized, you were no casual Christian. You were all in, publicly identifying with Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. So why in the world would Jesus say the very first thing I want you to do is to baptize them? You know what I think? I think it's because Jesus wanted to know on the front end of your walk with him, are you really serious about following me? Are you really serious? Are you willing to go public? Remember, Jesus didn't die in some faraway corner of the world with no one watching. If you go and you see Golgotha today and you go to Jerusalem, it's still today a main thoroughfare. This is a heavily trafficked area. Jesus died publicly. It would have been like the intersection of 435 and 35. He put himself out there humbled and humiliated and died on a cross for your sins. And having gone public for you, I think Jesus wants to know on the outset, are you willing to go public for me? You know, you as husbands, how many of you, if you said to your wife, honey, I love you, but I don't want to wear your ring because I'm not sure I want to make an outward expression. I'm not sure I want anybody to know that I love you. How would that go over in the home? Not well. But can I tell you, there's a lot of Christians who will be willing to say, you know what, I want your salvation, Jesus, and deep down I love you, but I don't want to go public. I used to get so aggravated with these politicians that you'd ask them about their faith, you know what they'd say? My faith is private. Listen to me, Christianity was never intended to be private. Personal you got to make a personal decision, but not private. There's no incognito Christians. We go public in our identification with Jesus Christ. Jesus wants to know, are you really serious about following me? You know, today, it's intended to be a public confession, but for the most part today, baptism is a private celebration. You know, we're in a church, we're, we're here. Uh, can I be real honest with you? It's a pretty easy deal to get into that baptistry in front of a bunch of other people that already love Jesus and say, I love Jesus too. It's a completely different deal to go out in the midst of an adverse culture that doesn't like Jesus very much and say, I love Jesus and I'm following him. That's why whenever I baptize somebody, I always challenge them, tell at least three people. You know, if we really wanted to do this in the spirit of what I think Christ intended, we would baptize you in front of your workplace we baptize you in front of your school. Because to live in the spirit of baptism is to be willing to tell the world, I don't care who knows and I don't care what you do with me. I'm following Jesus. 
because he's my only hope and he's my greatest joy. It's you going on record and saying, I love Christ. It's a public confession of your faith in him. You know, Jesus said, therefore, everyone who confesses me before men, I'll confess him before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I'll also deny him before my Father who is in heaven. It's a public confession. But you know, the next question is, if it's a public confession, what are you confessing? What are you confessing? And primarily, you're confessing Christ as Lord. But more than that, you're confessing a death to sin, a death to an old way of life, and being raised through faith in Jesus to walk in a new way of life. It's why when we baptize somebody at Lenexa Baptist Church, we baptize by immersion. The Greek word baptizo literally means to put under. But folks, listen to me. Your baptism is picturing what's occurred in your heart. It's picturing the gospel. It's picturing that you've not just been cleaned up. Listen, when you come to faith in Christ, it's not just a cleaner you. No, you are dying. You're dying to an old way of life and you're being raised to walk in a new way of life. Listen, if baptism and your salvation was just cleansing you, then we'd sprinkle, but it ain't cleansing. It's a death, and you're picturing the gospel. Know this today, your baptism is intended to be evangelistic. Did you know that? That you're picturing before the world the gospel, and we take very seriously how we present the gospel. And we tell people when they want to follow Jesus, listen to me, you better count the cost because you're dying. Life's no longer about you and what you want to do. You're following Christ. So we want to make sure when we baptize somebody, we're giving the world a right picture of what salvation truly is. That's why Paul said in Romans 6, 3, or do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus have been baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him through baptism into death so that as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of God the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. That again, I'm picturing what's already occurred in my heart, that I've died to an old way of life, I've died to an old Chad, and I've been raised as a new creation in Christ Jesus to walk in fellowship with him. Galatians 3.20 says this, I have been crucified with Christ, not cleaned up. I've been crucified in Christ, and yet I live, not I, but Christ who lives within me. In the life I live, in the flesh I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and died for me. So baptism is a public confession of our death to sin and new life in Christ, which leads us to our third and final point. Baptism is to be done post-conversion. It's to be done after giving your life to Jesus Christ. Since baptism, listen, since baptism is an expression of what's already occurred in your heart through faith, baptism can only be experienced by believers. To say it another way, if baptism is an expression of a faith that you already have, then baptism is not something that a non-believer can do. It's not something that an infant can do. Throughout the New Testament, the picture that we see, listen to me, on the basis of God's word, the picture that we see is that people place their faith in Jesus. They make a personal decision to follow Christ and then they get baptized. I want you to understand something this morning. Listen to me. All of us are born sinners. If you don't think so, ask your parents. They will tell you. You didn't come out of the womb knowing what to do right. You came out knowing how to sin because we've all been infected with the sin of Adam and Eve. But if you know Jesus Christ, it's because at a certain point in your life, God grabbed your attention. And listen to me, you don't have to know the date and time, you don't have to know all that, but at some point in your life, you have to make a personal decision to follow Christ. I want you to understand something today, that the idea of you being saved through the faith of another is not biblical. God doesn't have any grandchildren. Salvation is not genetic. It's not hereditary. 
It's something that you must decide to do yourself. And then having come to faith in Christ, realizing you can't save yourself and realizing Jesus is your only means of salvation, having placed your faith in him, then in obedience to his word, we get baptized. Maybe some of you are here and you were baptized as an infant. And listen, that event may have been incredibly special to your parents, but I seriously doubt you remember it. See, it had no real significance in your life because at that point you had no real faith. You know, we do baby dedications here at the church and I always say it's not really a baby dedication as much as it's a parent dedication. We're not saving those kids. The parents are just committing themselves to teaching those kids the the word of God and raising those children in the fear and the admonition of of the Lord. It's significant to the parents, but those kids, they're never gonna remember that. Sooner or later, our prayer is that that child will come to faith in Christ. Some of you, maybe as a child, you walked an aisle. You were just kind of following the crowd. And you got baptized, you got dunked in a pool, but it had no real meaning in your life. It had no real significance because you had no faith. Let me be clear here today. God is not impressed with wet sinners. There's nothing There's nothing supernatural or spiritual about that water. It's what's occurred in your heart that matters most. It's your faith in Jesus Christ that makes those waters significant. And maybe you went about your life and later on, you came to a place where you truly understood salvation. You truly understood what it meant to place your faith in Jesus Christ. And later on, you gave your life to Jesus Christ but you've never been baptized post-conversion, can I tell you, you need to follow in obedience to God's word. You know, the number one question that I often get asked is this. Is baptism necessary for salvation? And do you know what I've realized? That oftentimes what the person is asking is this. They're asking, is there a way for me to be a Christian and not get baptized? Can I tell you this morning with all honesty, that's the wrong question to be asking. See, the logical response to the Savior Jesus Christ who went public and died on a cross for our sins is not what can I get away with and still know Christ. The question ought to be, what must I do? That the only logical response to the one who gave everything for us is to say, Jesus, whatever you ask is what I want to do. You remember Peter preaching on on the day of Pentecost? And it says they were cut to the heart, meaning they realized we are guilty. And our only hope is Jesus. And they said to Peter, what do we got to do? Not Peter, what can we get away with and still get on board with this deal? No, what do we got to do? And he said, repent and be baptized. So some of you are asking this morning, do I need to get baptized today? Well, can I tell you, maybe you're here today and and you got baptized as an infant, but you know today had no real meaning in your life. Maybe it was a significant moment for your parents but it had no real meaning in your life because you had no faith. Can I tell you today, you need to be baptized. Maybe you're here today and you you were a child and you know in your heart you were just going through the motions. You look back on that event and had no real significance in your life. You're just following the crowd. You got dunked in a pool. But then later on, you could say, you know what, I know when I was in high school or when I was in college or as an adult or after I got married, I came to a realization that I don't really know Christ. And you placed your faith in him. Can I tell you today, if that's you, you need to get baptized today. You need to get your baptism in order. Baptism occurs post-salvation. Some of you got sprinkled. Can I tell you today, baptism is not a cleansing. It's a picture of the gospel. That you died Listen, we don't go around telling the world that Jesus can make you a little bit better. No, we go telling the world that Jesus can give you a new birth. 
that you don't have to be who you are, that God can change you from the inside out and make you a new creation. And if that's you today, maybe you need to get baptized. And if some of you are here today and you would know deep in your heart you've never given your life to Christ, some of you are sitting right there right now and you know what you're thinking? I don't know that I've ever really given my life to Jesus. You've gone to church, you can play the role. Maybe you even know the answers to say, but deep down in your heart, you know there's never been a moment in time where you truly confessed your sin and gave your life to Jesus. Can I tell you today, God loves you and there'll be no greater joy in your life than the joy of rebirth and forgiveness through faith in Jesus. If you trust him today, he's faithful and just to forgive you of all unrighteousness, to place his Holy Spirit in your heart and in your life, and to secure for you an eternal destination, all on the basis of faith. Folks, that's the greatest news the world's ever heard. If you don't know Jesus today, trust him and then be baptized. Follow in his obedience to his word. I say it every week, there's no greater joy than walking in obedience to God's word. You'll never regret it. You know, part of our job as a church is to break down any barriers that would prohibit you from obeying Christ. What we want to do, we don't want to put any obstacles in your way as you seek to follow Christ. So some of you are here today and you're thinking, I need to get baptized. What can I tell you? You can do it today. Right now. And immediately, I know what's going through your mind. You're thinking of excuses. They're popping in there right now. Boom, boom, boom. Because you know what? Satan will give you all kinds of excuses not to follow Jesus. He's really good at that. Because he doesn't want you to know the joy of following Christ. Can I tell you, we got every excuse covered. You might say today, you know what? I want my family to see it. I want my, uh, my family's not here. I got some relatives and some friends. Can I tell you, we're recording the service. You can plaster this thing on social media and email it to every person in the world if you want to. In fact, we would encourage you to do so. That would be living in obedience to God's word. Maybe some of you are here today and some other excuses pop into your mind. Maybe for some of you, it's not about understanding. You know what you need to do, but it's a practical issue. You say, I didn't bring my clothes. We got them. (laughs) Can I tell you, we got everything you need. We got every size, everything. Listen, there's not one thing we thought this through. We have got every base covered. We've had people up here working all week to get everything that you need so that you would have absolutely no excuse. You know, some of you are saying today, you're probably saying, I'm not sure if I want to join the church. Listen, this is not about joining the church. That's not what this is about today. This is about your personal relationship with Christ and walking in obedience to his word and knowing the joy of obedience. Not about church today. This is about Jesus and you knowing him and you walking in obedience to him. Some of you say, well, I don't want to draw attention to myself. Listen, Jesus was baptized as an example for you to follow, and it's not about you. It's about him and what he's done in your life, and there's no greater joy that you would put into Christ's heart today than you telling this world, I love him. So what's your excuse today? What would prohibit you? What would hold you back? So here's what we're gonna do. Pastor Bill's going to make his way up here, and he's going to start to play. I'm going to ask all of you to stand with me right now. If you're here today and you know, you would say, you know what? I know that I need to be baptized. Or maybe you're here today and you say, I don't know Christ. Here's what I'm asking you to do. Would you meet me down here? We got everything you need. What would prohibit you? What would prevent you? Today, we've got everything ready. You can make it right today. You can leave here with peace in your heart. Some of you, you're walking in disobedience, you're miserable. 
It's weighing on your heart. It's weighing on your mind every day. Can I tell you, there's nothing more miserable than a Christian that's walking in disobedience. You know what you need to do. What would hold you back? Right now, as we play, would you come join me right here? Right now, I'm asking you, would you come join me right here? Here's what, here's what else I'm going to do. Some of you are out there today and you're saying, you know what, I don't know if I want to go alone. I'm not sure I want to put myself out there all by myself. Here's what I'm asking you to do. Right now, would you look to the person to your right and your left? We're not trying to manipulate anybody. We just don't want anybody to have excuses. Would you look to the person to your right and your left and you tell them, if you want to be baptized today, I'll go with you. I'll go with you today. I'll walk with you. I'll stay with you the entire time. I'll be your support. I'll be your cheerleader. I'll be right there with you. Would you, right now, just talk to the person to your right or your left. You say to them, if you want to be baptized today, I'll go with you. Right now. I have no excuse. Amen, John. No excuse. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Come on. Amen. Who else will come? John's coming. John's saying, I'm not ashamed today to follow Jesus. Who else will join me up here today? Who else is going to come? John Gwynn. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Thank you so much. God bless you. Hey, John, go right out that way. They'll get you fixed up. I'll be right up there in a minute. God bless you. Come on forward. We're playing right now. If you know you need to be baptized, I'm going to pray for us. Even as I'm praying, you come. If you know you need to be baptized today, you come on. I'm going to be praying, but you still come. All right, let's pray together. Father, today, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your forgiveness. We thank you that you left the glory of heaven. You humbled yourself. And you died on a cross for our sins. God, I pray today, pride wouldn't stand in the way of anybody following Jesus. There's somebody today that today, pride is standing in the way. They know what they need to do. God, I pray today they would humble themselves. They would identify with your son, Jesus. And they would go public in their declaration that I love Christ and I'm following him. God, I pray if there's anybody here that doesn't know you, God, work in their heart. God, I pray that you, the hound of heaven, would not let go of them until they trust in you and submit to your lordship. God, I pray if there's anybody here that, doesn't, that, that, that knows you but never been baptized, God, work in their heart. Draw them to yourself. I pray that today they would follow you and they know the joy of obedience to your word. Father, thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy and your forgiveness. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.